Welcome to the Romance Podcast, and this is actually the first episode where my beautiful wife, Kenzie, is back at work full-time as a mother. Oh, that's all <laughs> hard with the baby. Yeah, you've been working from home for a bit, mm-hmm. doing this podcast from home for a bit, but now you're actually back in the studio at Q101 doing mornings, yes. downtown Chicago. How is that for a first-time mom? You know, it, it's so hard. It's, I mean, it's really, really hard. I can't, yeah, I mean, you saw me. I'm going to be super candid. Like, I cried a couple times. Yeah. And I, it didn't hit me until it was really, like, I was going to bed, the, uh, like, before, right before Monday. So Sunday yeah. going into Monday. And, I like, I it was a busy day. I got everything done. I sit down. And it was like, I'm setting my alarms to wake up in the morning. And I just started bawling my eyes out. And yeah. you were even like, oh, you need to go to bed. Like, you can't do this right now because I I have to get up so early. Mm -hmm. Um, For the morning show, I get up at three in the morning so that way I can pump because I'm a a breastfeeding mama, so I pump and then get ready and then leave the house by four so I can drive downtown. Which never happens. You leave it like what, like 420? 410. 410. 410. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm doing my best. And then, um, so I leave around four and then I get to the garage at NBC Tower and I pump there. <laughs> so, so the big radio star, Kenzie K, uh, if you find her in the NBC Tower, <laughs> by the way, it's very secure. You can't get in there. But you're pumping at like five in the morning. I like to pump it, pump it. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's uh, it's not exactly a party anymore. And then during the show, a little secret here, during the show, you're also pumping, correct? I pump live <laughs> on air. And I have not, yeah, I haven't brought that up. Uh, so we were trying to figure out what to do because it's like to go to a room, to set up your pump, to pump go to the fridge, store the milk. So I'm like, I, we did the whole show live. Our show was super, super live. We didn't have pre-planned bits that we play from the day before. Like it's all very live. And I'm like, how am I going to get away for 30 minutes right, to do all right. of this? And I cannot skip it. I do it right before the show. So I can wait for a few hours. I do it on the way home, but that's too long of a gap. Like I have to do it during the show. And so I wrap, the trick is I wrap a blanket around my pump. Okay. So you don't hear it rattle against the table. Okay. It like it like softens the vibration. It's like, yeah. so you can't hear it. And I pump live during the show during the eight o'clock so hour. Fun. And nobody knows that, but no. now you get a little exclusive yeah. on our podcast. I'm covered. Like I cover the whole thing. You better. Like, You're working yeah. with two guys. You better be covered. <laughs> it's. I, I promise you it's not an attractive moment. I look like a cow. It's not like this. Ooh, what's going on over there? Your udders are hanging out. Yeah. It's not a good look, uh, but it's got to get done. So mm-hmm. the, the trickiest part really, like, obviously it's very sad to leave, but I keep trying to tell myself, like, uh, Marina woke up at 7.30 one of the mornings. 8 30 the other morning yeah. so i'm like okay i am like a huge percentage done with my day by the time he even wakes up when yeah. it comes to me waking up driving downtown doing a huge portion of my show it's like i'm it's not his whole wake window you're right? missing a lot of his sleeping hours but who cares he's sleeping. yes he's asleep right. so i keep trying to tell myself that it's like i'm really missing like two and a half hours with him by the time he wakes up yeah. right even though i'm gone for this huge chunk of day but what's tricky is the lack of sleep I'm really getting. I We have a wonderful baby who sleeps through the night, which yeah. is incredible, yeah. in his crib at eight weeks old. He like, he's thrives awesome. at night. He is, he is awesome. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So that doesn't happen a lot. We're really lucky. The unfortunate part for me is it doesn't matter how good he sleeps. I'm still not going to get a lot of sleep because I, I do my best. I do his like 7.15, 7.30. We do his bath, get him ready. You do the nighttime bottle. Yeah. I go pump. Big surpriser. It's 90% of my life right now is pumping. Like, yeah. that's it. That's how every you, two hours. Like you said, you like to pump it, I pump like it. To pump it, pump it. <laughs> I don't enjoy it, but I'm trying to do it for, you know, his uh-huh. sake. So anyways, I, I do all that. And then I sleep for about two to three hours. When I want to get to bed, I wake up at midnight. I pump. By the time I fall back asleep, you're looking at an hour to an hour and a half. By the time I wake up, go downstairs, pump for 30 minutes store it, fall, come back upstairs, fall back asleep. Mm -hmm. And then I get to sleep for a little longer because I wake up at three. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, last night I probably got four hours of sleep total. So Mm, it's it's not good. I I don't like that. It's not good. I think we got to push you going to bed earlier. I know uh, David Kaplan, who's been on the show, 
um, did mornings for a very long time. And he, cause I did mornings for three years as well. And he told me that like five hours of sleep was his like magic number. Like he, as long as he got five hours, he was good. Mm-hmm. Right. Did he, and did he, um, was he pumping? He was not pumping. Oh, okay. Was I was pumping. hoping he had some pumping advice. And I found that doing mornings that like, yeah, five hours is something like you, you want to get more, but if you can get five hours now, you're not getting that right now. So I, I, that bothers me. So we got to figure out a way to like maybe start bedtime earlier or whatever. But like we got to get It's hard little- because, you know, with our like with with morning show schedules, which you've had, which I have, like you can only go to bed so early yeah, before right. I'm not like we have an almost 10 year old. We have a newborn baby. We're doing the bath schedule. I have to wake up to pump anyway. So I can go to bed earlier, but then I got to wake up again. The What's thing is, the time frame? if you weren't pumping, going to bed at nine, you're getting uh, six and a half hours because yes. it's consistent. You have to wake up every three hours to pump. Yes. That's where you were, we're falling into like, you're not getting, and I can't sleep. do anything about that. Yeah. Like I can't fix it. I can't make it shorter. Is there I can't any way I can pump for you. I would love it. You don't understand. <laughs> by, by the I way, have nipples, Greg. Could yeah, you milk me? <laughs> that's my favorite like movie quote of all time, at least and with this kind of theme, yes. is uh, meet the parents yes. when De Niro <laughs> says to Ben Stiller when he's like, because uh, Ben Stiller goes, well, you can milk anything with nipples. And he just looks at him and he's like, I have nipples. Can you milk me, Fokker? It's I have so nipples, Fokker. Can you milk me? <laughs> um, yeah, so I wish so bad. I feel like, listen, I am a Christian. And I think God obviously did a lot of things, you know, he created, created a lot of stuff and he had a plan in his mind. He did mind. everything. Yeah. Did everything. Where are you going with this? And my point is, I don't mean to question me a lot on his plate, but I just feel like maybe one person should have created the baby in their stomach and birthed it. And maybe the other should have been in charge of feeding it. Yeah. I just feel like it could have been more of a partnership yeah. scenario. I will say <laughs> I would have loved that. because with Tristan at about three months, uh, it was formula. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, so there is an alternative. You do want to breastfeed and thankfully you're able to do it. So there is a choice, but you are choosing to go there's, the breastfeeding route. There's a choice and mm-hmm. nothing's wrong with either. And I don't feel like, oh my gosh, I can't, be- I was formula fed. Like my yeah. mom did that with all the kids, like not yeah. a big deal. Um, for me personally, I'm on a journey where I feel like this is like what I want from, and especially having one of the, one of my things with breastfeeding is there's, there's a lot of benefits to it, obviously. Um, the, the giving them like good immunity to things because like you're helping give them antibodies. Mm -hmm. And because we have a 10 year old who's in school and at baseball and he's around tons of other kids, he's around school, he's in activities, and I'm exposed to all of his germs, mm-hmm. right? So I can help give the baby antibodies to those. And you got a lot of body to give. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. Antibodies. Uh-huh. Um, listen, so there's some uh, comedy here is that we do split up our uh, baby chores here. You know, obviously she does the pumping and those kind of things. And she does the bath time at night. I do the, a lot of majority of the feedings because you are pumping and stuff. Yeah. Um, and then when you're at work in the morning, I obviously am the one that to greet Marino and I get him out of the crib and I, oh, he's so smiley. and I have found because we have this app, like back when Tristan was a baby, we had like old school baby monitors and it was a camera and it was like an actual monitor. It was like on my nightstand that I watched. Well now with iPhones and whatever, whatever, it's all through the app. So like literally like I have the app on my phone, you have the app on your phone. So like when it's my time to like be the baby, baby monitor right uh i have it up and i'd say kenzie unplug and go to bed she will not do that she has to have it up as well because she has to double check that i'm doing everything correct (laughs) so she's not even monitoring the baby she's monitoring daddy monitoring the baby i i actually do set it up even at work i have it up in the background it just it makes me feel better Mm because sometimes i wake up and it's like God, he's been really quiet. And this is what's better than like old school when people, you'd have to go in the room to make sure your baby's breathing. It's like, I can zoom in on the app. Like you actually get to zoom in mm-hmm. and I can see his chest going up and down. It's like, okay, so for me, it actually mm-hmm. makes me feel better. I think I'm getting better sleep instead oh. of laying there wondering if he's okay. Now, if you trusted your partner and you trusted Marino's father, I just you, feel would, like you're huh, a hard- you, you would uh, sleep well knowing he's in great hands with daddy, but you don't feel that way. That's not true. I just think that you're a really, really hard sleeper. Mm-hmm. And I feel like I hear everything. Like I'm I'm in tune. 
And mm-hmm. I feel like it it could take a, like a lot to maybe get you out of bed sometimes. Sometimes I just like to see. There are times that away. Marino gets up at like three in the morning a little bit and he cries for maybe a minute or two. And, get, and what happens? He Falls goes back, back to bed. If it was up to Kenzie, she would jump out of bed and oh baby, let me do the baby. But and then, and then we're screwed. Mark me for loving him. No, and we went to the doctor a couple days ago and the doctor actually said, Tough love is actually good. She said a little bit of it. Right. So last night in particular, he he do it. He sleeps through the night for the most part. But last night he woke up not once but twice uh, for like a minute and a half, two minutes each. And I was like, no, nah, I'm going to let him work this out. And literally he cried for a little bit. He whined for a little bit. And he was right back to sleep. And I would like to clarify because I was there. It was more like, yeah. No, he was more yeah. than that. He was more than that. Yeah. No, because yes. if he was like hysterical, I wouldn't be able to do it. Mm. I'm like, eh, I got to go in there. So anyways, just stop monitoring me. Like I got this. There's times where you're like, oh, you just, you open up the swaddle too fast. And I'm like, you did. Hey, is, is, is he still breathing? Uh, he's good. You know what no, I'm saying? They, yeah. There, so we have a weighted swaddle mm-hmm. for Which him. Which was a godsend to us. He loves it. Yeah. It's like he's pissed when he's not. He gets excited when he's set him in it. Like he well, loves it. We have to swaddle him because he is crazy. And so his he's, arms. I'm going to punch you. His arms like. He's, he's very like um the newborn like jerks. Like he's crazy with him. He kicks a lot. His arms flare. So like, you can say crazy it. and that's sweet. I say crazy and you're like want to punch me. Yes. Got it. Yeah. Noted. Noted. For sure. It's on, it's on tape. Like you, you can go back and listen to me say crazy. She gets mad. She says crazy. It's so smart. I am like, it's crazy. he's got crazy arms. You're like, he's crazy. It's a difference. Jeez, difference. Okay, whatever. It's said more with love. Uh-huh. So, um, we put him in this little, this little sleep swaddle and he gets <laughs> Wait, a, it's a straight jacket. Let's be real. It's a straight jacket. For his arms. Okay. And, yeah. um, he likes it. He does. He actually gets, he sleeps it, well. He really does. And he's cute. He kind of like. When he's working something out at night, he just swishes. He looks like a little shark or something. Yeah. Um, but one time you like, cause it's a lot of Velcro on it. You flipped it up to way, way, way too fast. Too fast for you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. I'm sorry that he can't even hold up his head. Uh-huh. You have to be careful. You have to so do things now, gently. Now what I do instead of being like, now right. I go. Good. Thank you. And I look at the camera. I'm like, Hey mommy, is this okay for you? Yep. And has a microphone. It's going to be soft like, because of you. Really? Because you of do you. This? You're a soft parent more than me. Okay. Yes, you are. Okay. That's not what you say off camera. You're like, you're too mean to him. You're too cold. No, you're that. soft in other areas. Mm, you're okay. soft. In, not with the baby. You always be like, you're babying him. I'm like, I'm babying the baby. <laughs> you baby our 10 year old. Uh, That's the difference. Uh-huh. That's the difference. Is the difference? Yes. Yeah. Because. But you weren't around when he was a baby. I was the same way with Tristan. Like he never slept in my bed ever. He was always in his own room, in his own crib crib always okay and that was the same thing i did with with marino because tristan's a great sleeper and he never once like a lot of like stories even like my own niece and nephew they'll run into mommy and daddy's bed uh bed middle of the night like consistently tristan never did that he was always in his own room because you started from the very beginning we have neighbors going through that right now with their two-year-old right like Mm -hmm. like won't sleep in his own room like so like you weren't around for tristan to know that i did the same stuff um and there was tough love with him as well but you know they're just they are two different kids so you know, one needs maybe a little bit more tough love than the other one did. But same thing. Ugh, I cannot. The problem is, I don't know what you're you're very skewed because mm-hmm. right now we have a two month old mm-hmm. who I think it's okay to I'm sorry, baby the baby. Mm-hmm. But you're like you're twisted with you sometimes won't even let Tristan help, which he actually likes to do. Mm-hmm. Like he likes to help. I let him help. You're like weird about stuff though. So now that I'm gone in the morning. Uh-huh. Um, like, but you're still monitoring us, so yes. like, you know what's going on. I right? wish I could have cameras around the whole house. It's only in his room. That's the unfortunate part. You have to do the uh-huh. whole routine in his room. Yeah. So I'm gone in the morning. So when it comes to making Tristan breakfast, you don't have your hands free. You can hand me the baby. You can make him breakfast. So the other day you said to me, oh, it's so hard. Like, like the baby's in my hand. I couldn't open the drawer. And I go... Well, you could just ask Tristan to open the door and you're like, I still want to make him breakfast. I do, because a big part of my role as a father of two children now is to make sure Tristan's life doesn't change for the worse and it makes sure Marino's... For the worse? And and make sure that Marino's life is awesome, just like Tristan's was. So, like, I want to make sure that Tristan has the same kind of life he's always had and used to, all all the while making sure Marino has an awesome... I'm balancing both. So, no, I'm not going to have Tristan make his own breakfast. I'm still going to make it. This is what this is what you misinterpret. This is where you Mm -hmm. take take it you can't reach so our freezer it's split in half it's not like a side door so it's like low the right? freezer so, is a drawer yeah it's a drawer yeah. at the bottom so it's hard to like bend over it's not like mm-hmm. up high 
I said he could open the drawer and help you as low. Mm. And then you could go on and make his whole breakfast with one hand. You put the waffles in the toaster. That's easy. Mm-hmm. I'm like, you can let him help you. And so be, he's not going to be like, you don't care about me anymore. I opened a drawer. My life's ruined. Mm-hmm. Like, don't you see the difference? Mm-hmm. You don't like, I, I don't get it. Like, like I, you're I, mad at the baby for being a baby. I'm not mad. I'm not mad at the baby. I, I, mm-hmm. and, and I want to go into it again. We have a whole episode. I think episode three was Welcome Marino, I believe. Wasn't it? I don't even know. You can go hear about our baby and the birth and all the uh, difficulties. Oh, no. That was that was the Welcome Marino. We had a, a whole podcast episode about how difficult he was, too. Didn't we? <laughs> Aftermath. <laughs> it's called Aftermath. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 That's the one you may want to check out and kind of do. But I will say he's gotten better. Which is yeah, cool. Yeah, because he's, I mean, he's, get, he's adjusting mm-hmm. to the actual world. Yeah. Like everything, yeah. everything's new to them. They've never felt hunger before. They've never felt yeah. cold before. They never felt, so yeah. he's, he's getting used to the yeah. world. If you listen to Aftermath, he has gotten better from that episode for sure. Absolutely. Um, but still a long way to go. <laughs> he's two months old. You're like so mad at him because he's not moving out to college. Like that's like your expectation. I don't understand. Well, anyways, welcome back to work. Uh, I know. I I said to her because uh, Sunday was the last day she was home before she had to go into the studio, and she was definitely like tears in her eyes, and she was all like anxious. She even said, "I have a lot of anxiety and everything." And I said to her, "I said, listen. I said ultimately this is going to be good for you because it's you know you go stir crazy in the house if you're in the house no matter how much you love your kids or your baby if you're in the house nonstop with no outlet and no escape you go stir crazy." So I said to her, "I said this is going to be really good for you. It's going to get you a chance to be back on the radio and like you know doing what you'd love to do and being witty and funny and all entertaining all that kind of stuff." And then also it gets you out of the house. I'm like, you know, like when I go to like, I take Tristan to to, uh, his baseball games or practice. Like I enjoy those couple hours of like being outside in a baseball field or, or playing catch, whatever it is, like enjoy those times out, uh, away from your child because you have to be and appreciate it as, as kind of an escape, the car ride, the music, whatever you need to do to kind of like, just kind of unwind a little bit, enjoy that. And then come home and you have your son and you have obviously me and Tristan as well. But, um, and so look, Looking back, have you been able to enjoy this? Are you looking at it as kind of a little escape? What, what's your what's your? It's like conflicted. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I've always enjoyed like accomplishing things. That's kind of how I am. So mm-hmm. like, no one being like, oh my gosh, I I have like the schedule down and knocked out the show and I got home and I was still a good mom. I take pleasure in like, boom, nailed it, racked yeah. that good off my checklist. I like that kind of stuff. Yeah. I do feel incre- an incredible amount of guilt because mom guilt. yes, I have huge, huge mom guilt because you know it's different with Tristan because he's at school yeah. for majority of the day and he's having a blast and yeah. he knows I'm gonna come home after work and we're gonna like, you can explain things to, to him like all that yeah. and um, all of his activities are after school so we never miss games or anything like that so he's getting it. I feel a lot of guilt because I woke up with Marino every morning. Mm-hmm. He was really happy about it. There is something about the mom when they're that young that offers them, they they talk about like it's an anxiety release for them because they recognize your smell and your voice. It's a little more of a comfort. And I hate that he starts his morning off with me? Yes. What the and, hell? No, kidding. Wait, what the hell? <laughs> no, but he, like, he, I, we, can I tell you something? Running. Can I tell you something? What? And I'm not trying to make you sad, but this, this podcast, okay, so it's been three days since you started work. And every morning when I've gone in there, he has smiled huge Good. all three why would that mornings. make me sad like, because I, I know you, i know you probably think like he only does it for you but like i'm telling you Aww. he wakes up in the morning and he sees me and big smiles and giggles and so like he's not i know he does miss you but he's not sad in the morning so well, that's just, good that's what, i don't want him to be sad but mm-hmm. i wish like i wish he could understand oh in two hours like I tell, I tell him, yeah. you do tell him yeah. and he's, he's, he responds he's, he's, like, he's cool. gifted he gives the thumbs up he's gifted i go hey I mom mom will be home in about a couple hours yeah i just i feel <laughs> i just i do feel guilt and i just i don't know i it's it's really well, a hard balance you had right two now. months of maternity leave okay i will say about a month of that, that that you were working a bit as well it wasn't a straight maternity leave no yeah i did a lot of on-air stuff i did our podcast i did yeah. i was i was pretty yeah. busy with work during maternity leave when so. tristan was born i was given two weeks for paternity leave so paternity. i actually i actually had two weeks and i did one week in a row and then i did like four consecutive fridays to kind of give me extended weekends you know mm-hmm. but times have changed man like our our good buddy our neighbor i'm not gonna say where he works or anything but my a guy a guy right he got three months paid paternity leave so there are men Damn. out there he got a significantly longer 
leave than I did. <laughs> yes. I was trying to heal. I mean, uh-huh. I just, it is crazy. And um, it's, a cert- listen, these are company policies. So like I have really great bosses who they like, you they, do. Yep. They, they are super awesome, super kind about it. But company policy, they're not part of corporate policies, right? Yeah. And they, they've been willing to work with me. Like, if you need a day at home still, like, right. work even just doing the show from home because of the baby. Like, well, like, let us know if you didn't get a night's sleep. Right. Like, they're super kind. But it is insanity the way corporations, when they're coming up with these policies, expect women to return so fast. I think yeah. it should be a minimum, a minimum 12 weeks. I really do. Three months, Okay. I think that that's like, cause I'm not even there yet. It hasn't even been three months mm-hmm. for me and you know, to be back. And then I was working from home even before then I basically got, but then I still have my podcast requirements and stuff. So I was going to say I had six weeks off, but I, I kind of didn't. Yeah. And then I started doing an hour show and then two hour shows and I was back full time. So, mm-hmm. I mean, I only got a couple weeks, but let me, let me clarify work. those, those things you're talking about. They were all from home. Yes. We're in our studio right now doing the podcast. Uh, up until a couple of days ago, you were doing the the radio show from our studio as well. I just, you know what? I can't, I can't explain it. And honestly, I knew women deserved a good amount of time off after having like babies. I realized that. Yeah. But after giving birth, I, I'm a, I consider myself to be a pretty strong person. Mm-hmm. I was not anticipating the mental toll it would take on me. And I was a different person mentally, I would say, for at least two weeks. Mm -hmm. I wasn't even interested in talking with people. Like, I had a million unanswered tech. Like, I was just Mm -hmm. not – I almost wasn't there. It was was kind of scary. Um, I did, I didn't not feel a connection to the baby. Like I know some people have that because mm-hmm. it's takes such a mental toll and I totally get it. I think I had that. It was like screaming in my face. Ah! I'm, 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 joke, joke, jokes, jokes. I said, you're not, you're not <laughs> getting, you're not getting my vibes. Um, so I, it was a really, really big mental struggle for me and just like wanting to tend to him, trying to breastfeed. I, I had a really hard time walking for a while mm-hmm. after giving birth. Like I, and they just being like, oh, I should work in a few weeks. I mean, that's, yeah. it is actually You were insanity. dreading the day that you had to go back, for sure. I, I couldn't mentally imagine even physically walking around great for mm. a while. Like, that was hard for me to even imagine. So it was really, really tricky. And, like, you don't understand. Because people get off, like, you can, you know, you can go on leaves for, like, certain mental things and stuff like that. What people need to realize is when you have a baby, it's, one, huge physical toll, of course. Also, a baby needs constant attention, so you have that. But there's a huge mental aspect with it. Mm -hmm. Huge. Well, let me say this, because I do joke around a lot, but uh, Kenzie, on behalf of all of us here at the podcast and everything, everyone watching, you have rocked this pregnancy and this birth like you really what? you really have I've, I've been there watching you and obviously helping you but like you you were a rock star during pregnancy a rock star during birth and these past two months being at home you know not having to go in for work greatest mama i've, I've ever seen like you really Aww. you were you and and now working and trying to balance everything you you knocked it out the park for a lack of a better term oh yeah. Well, that's your favorite. It's a baseball term, yeah, so it's gonna be your yeah, favorite yeah. one. Hopefully, Thank the you. Cubs knock it out of the park tonight too. Oh, no, <laughs> but you did, you did for real. So, congratulations on that. And uh, I know, I know, the, all Chicago Q one one audience is very happy to have you back in studio. Yes. Um, and don't worry, Marino, we're having a good time. We're, we're partying. I know. I watch and make sure. I know. <laughs> yeah, stop watching me. You should get back. You know, hopefully, your boss is here. This, like, just take her phone I away. I told him I'm watching you. No, but like, I already told my boss today that I was watching. You, you should be more focused on the show. I feel like I'm focused. I feel like you're a little distracted yeah. on the air today. I'm one thing about me is I'm a kick-ass multitasker. I, oh, pump, yeah. I pump during the show. Uh-huh. I watch you during the show. Oh, man. All right. I answer all the texts during the show. It's good. Let's move along here. Uh, Earth Day is coming up. Very, very excited about Earth Day. Yeah. And um, my neighborhood, our neighborhood now, they do a really, really cool thing, a really cool tradition here in this neighborhood is that the neighbors all get together and the, the town donates a bunch of garbage bags and like the grabbers, you know, those long sticks where you can press a button and like grab a trash. Little claws. And, and the neighbors all like for like a week and or a weekend or whatever they all like in honor of earth they clean up our neighborhood and like it's a big neighborhood and a lot of construction has happened so you get like these things that blow through the pond and through the forests and just through the ground you just see like just litter and trash where it's like okay now it's time to clean that stuff up winter is over no more snow everything's melted so it's like a really cool thing that like me and tristan do like we'll go and like we live on a pond so we'll go kind of go to the bank of the ponds and like we'll put our winter boots on like we're stepping in milk uh, not milk uh, 
uh, milk. Not milk. What's but like, going on out there? Like mu- muck. muck, 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 not muck. <laughs> I put milk in mu- muck. Stepping in muck and everything, and we're like, you know, with the grabbers, and but it's fun. Like we're filling up these trash bags, doing something good for our community. Woo! So, so Kenzie, Warriors. Kenzie, are you excited no, to clean up I'm not for doing this Earth Day? You. Okay, so the thing about <laughs> Earth Day that we and this tradition. Is that it's uh it's very close to my birthday. Uh-huh. And this year is the twenty second of April and your birthday is twenty fourth of April. Yes. Mm. And this trash cleanup has happened like it's not always on the exact day, so it's landed on my birthday before. Right. right. And I wanna say it was last year, the year before, you were like, it was my actual birthday. Mm. And you were like, Oh, let's go as a family <laughs> go pick up trash. And clean up our neighborhood. I, I, first off, I restrained myself from punching you in the face. <laughs> and then I was like, I think this is an amazing opportunity for you and Tristan to get out of the house and bond. What I will not be doing on my birthday is literally picking up trash. I pick up this whole house. Uh-huh. I cook dinners. I am, a, I got two kids that I am a mother to. I work and I'm not spending my birthday picking up other people's trash, which I feel like I do every day already. Think about how good you would feel Knowing that I was a part I of this good. neighborhood cleanup. I feel good sending you guys out as the as the people's champion. Yeah. I think it's good for you guys to do it. Because you're not a big chore guy. Mm-hmm. You and Tristan, I think, don't do enough chores in the house. I don't, okay, hold on. I don't think you give me enough credit. I give you credit. Of how much I help in this house now. Yes. Uh, I mean, I don't want to list all the things that I do, but like, I, you're not giving me enough credit here. I, I do give you credit, but... but I feel like... Oh, you, you feel like what? I feel like... You know, Tristan's actually asked to help you before. He's at that age where, like, helping gets him kind of excited. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, he'll be like, ooh, shoveling a driveway? Like, he's at that stage. Yeah, and I'm like, no, dude, I have a snowblower. Like, you're gonna yeah. slow me up. <laughs> yeah, and, like, I feel like you're not giving him the opportunity to uh-huh. do certain things and learn, like, his tasks. Yeah. Like, I think he's almost... He's 10 in about a month, yeah. roughly. May 19th. Yes, about a month away. So um, I think that it would be good for him to do small things like make his bed in the morning Mm -hmm. or when he gets home from school, plug his own computer in or do Mm -hmm. little things like that. Because one thing that you get mad at Tristan for is that his memory is not stellar. Mm -hmm. (laughs) He does not have a great memory. Forgets a lot of things. Yeah, He does. But if he has daily tasks that are his responsibility, I think you're helping build things that you have to remember. He doesn't really yeah. have anything he has to remember. Hey, Here's the deal. And so I, th- but my point is, I think going out for Earth Day and stuff like that, it's like, it's good. You guys need to contribute to other things. I feel like I, in my mind, like the, the dream, right? The dream is What's I have, okay. I have uh, two great kids, right? I have a beautiful wife and we are all out together as a family unit. You're wearing Merino and like a baby Bjorn. So I get to carry and, them and, and pick all, up trash. And we're all like picking up trash and we're all making a difference together as a Roman family unit. I have a couple of dreams that haven't come true too. So I guess we're just going to have to, <laughs> I guess we're just going to have to readjust. But this is always my, like always on my birthday weekend when yeah. we should be celebrating. He's out picking trash. Well, just know when I, when I post a picture of all of the trash bags full to the top and like it gets 5,000 likes of so people are like, oh man, those Roman boys make a difference. Like you're not, you're not being tagged. I'm not part of it. You're not being tagged. Interesting. <laughs> That's really nice. It's really nice. I hope that you remember it's my birthday when you come back inside. I really hope that uh, if you if your neighborhoods don't do this and you're listening, I hope maybe you start it because it really. All jokes aside, you know she's not going to do it. Um, all jokes aside, <laughs> I I apologize. I then I'm going to be with the baby when you but, go outside and do it. But we are going to do it, and I really listen. I don't like picking up trash either, but it is it is great to teach your kids like you know how to be respectful and how to clean up you know your own area. Listen, I love Chicago. I love Chicago, the city, the big city, right? It makes me so sad when I see just trash and litter. It makes me, I get so mad about it. Like, it's like, dude, I actually have theories about how we can fix this. You know, if I was, if I was president, you, you're going to turn green or, in a second, you or, calm down or the mayor. I mean, I would just take like, I, there's a, there's a whole thing you could do to fix this, you know? I'm not going to put out my views right now because I Good think heavens. because I think you'll get mad at me. But pump the brakes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I feel like you know what I could do here as a small part of that is like in our neighborhood and really get the kids to kind of get involved. So my point is, if you're hearing this podcast, you could do the same thing in your neighborhood and you could really make a difference on Earth Day, Earth Day weekend, or whatever. And I mean, it doesn't have to only be on Earth Day. It could literally be in the spring, in the summer, in the fall. You could do it. How about more. this? How about we pick up trash May seventeenth? Mm-hmm. 
which is your birthday. I can't, <laughs> uh, we have tickets to a Cubs game. Oh, oh it's so convenient. <laughs> I May 17th, I will grab some trash bags uh-huh. because this is your wish. Uh-huh. This is your dream. Yeah. And I want to make that a reality I, on your birthday. I didn't place Earth Day close to your no, birthday. No, Not no. my fault. This is your dream, you said. I, for your birthday, <laughs> yeah, uh-huh. I want to make your dream a reality. Yeah. That's what I, I want. I would argue that Earth Day happened before your birthday because like the Earth was here before you. So Okay, that's nice. <laughs> This is, you see how everything about me in this family, it's everyone else in the family and me, uh, always. All right, all right. Anyways, moving along to uh, Famously in Love, kind of a, a funny story that we can maybe relate to a, a little, little bit. A little bit, yeah. Why don't you explain what's going on here? Okay, so Raven Simone was uh, recently getting interviewed. And really fast, if you don't know who that is, she was uh, Olivia in the Cosby Show. That adorable little girl. She's also that so Raven. I, I'm, I'm oh, getting there. I'm going in chronological order. Okay. Oh, I skipped. She's, yeah, thank you. <laughs> she she was that adorable little girl in the Cosby Show. Uh, uh, Olivia, I think her name was. And I mean, I'll be honest. Like, I I, I, I know it's probably bad to say, but I used to love the Cosby Show. The show was great. We don't support the actions yeah. of yeah. The show. Was everyone like, knew the show was good. It was a oh. very popular show. All time favorite. I mean, it was just a great, great show. And uh, when they, a lot of times when they have like a, a, a staple, like a great, great show, and they add a kid to it, it sucks. Like I, Fresh Prince of Bel Air, I don't care about when that kid. When they added Nikki, I don't care about him. Yeah. Uh, I, I used to be a fan of um, Family Ties, and they added uh, a little kid later on in life. Like, and I get what they're trying to do, but like normally, you just hate kids. For me, no, for me, this doesn't work. Like, I fell in love with like you know. Uh, Theo Huxtable and like uh, Alex P. Keaton. You didn't like, need anybody else. I didn't need a little kid, you know? But anyways, the Cosby show, however, that Olivia, who's Ra- Raymond Simone, she, I believe, added to the show. She was really cute and she was really funny and she's very witty. Then she went on to become That's So Raven, right? That's So Raven. Yeah. And an iconic Cheetah Girl and many yep. other uh, many other movies and shows and yep. acting, obviously. But this, uh, the Cheetah Girls was iconic. Okay. okay. I don't, were, did you, were you part of the Cheetah Girls? This is where we have an age difference because yes. I don't know anything about Cheetah Girls. Love the Cheetah Girls. Best yeah. movie ever. It was actually a girl group. You Wasn't it really 3LW, uh, Adrian Bailon was part of it? Adrian, yeah, Adrian Bailon. So she was part of 3LW, a, a group back in the day. That oh, I, I see. Like, I don't know that. Yeah. But she was a cheetah girl. Okay. Absolutely. Yep. She was awesome. She was one of them. There's four cheetah girls. Mm-hmm. Um, Awesome. Cinderella, my my song. Anyways, okay. so this was like every girl's dream. Okay. This girl group, they're in high school. They choreographed dance. Okay. It was awesome. Okay. okay. So it was a Disney special. Now, she's become so iconic for that. Like cheetah girls. There's still Halloween costumes, all of that, yeah. right? So she is married and she was uh, doing a podcast recently and the girl interviewing her and Raven Simone starts singing one of the like classic Cheetah Girl songs okay. and her wife is just sitting there mm-hmm. and they go off. They have fun. They're like breaking down choreography practically. Yeah. Okay. And they finish this whole song they practically do. And her wife is just like, I really wish I could have joined in on that. That looked fun. Her <laughs> wife didn't know the song at all. And some people are like, how do you not... Haven't you like watched this like your wife's like yeah. iconic thing? Mm-hmm. It's kind of weird that you don't know it. But for me, I feel like that a little bit with you. Well, first off, before we get into that, is there an age difference between them? Do we know? I don't. I feel like they look similar age. I okay. could be wrong, but they don't look like super skewed okay. at all, in my opinion. Okay. So yeah. So I know where you're going with this. Like I've had a pretty decorated music career in my life, and don't laugh, but I was in a boy band called Vi Three, and yeah, we had you know the album was whatever, but like the, the single "Eyes Close So Tight." To this day, the best song I ever wrote in my entire life it was top 40 record. I think we peaked out at number 36 in the country. Uh, went on tour with the Backstreet Boys, Britney Spears, O Town. Like literally had like in the boy band heyday. We were we were doing it, you know. You because of our age difference have no idea who Vi3 is. Not I got nothing. No idea about my past musical history. Yes. I mean, you actually got your start at uh, KDWB in Minneapolis. Right. That was a big interview when we got interviewed by KDWB. Uh, and I believe it was Dave Ryan in the morning because I'm like, sure. yeah, I mean, that was a big deal when we got that station to add our song. So like literally you would have heard that song on the radio, but you were probably like five. Probably. So you didn't know it. I'm like, play it, Dave. So, <laughs> so the my point is, is that when people come up to me and talk about the old days of like VI3 or like people tag me in Instagram stories of like, this is actually recently about they bought the album from like a disc replay store <laughs> and they were like put, tagging me and I reshared it. You have no idea about that part of my life. I really don't like you. Obviously, we, we talk a lot as a couple. We're yeah. both talkers. So yeah. I've heard many stories and you've shared so many touring stories with me and creating this song when you made this music video. So I know that kind of stuff from yeah. talking. 
Um, and you've played different things for me. Like, oh, I, I wrote this song because of this. And then you've played the song for me or something. Yeah. But no, I have never gone like out of my way and like Googled you or looked it up. Because for me, it's almost like you were just a different person back yeah. then. Like if you if you did it right now, I would be so involved. I'd yeah. listen to every single thing you do. I'd be your biggest cheerleader. I'd be this. But like I'm in love with with you You're now. You're in love with non boy band Roman. <laughs> yeah, like that that just seems like a different person. It, it was, would be like yeah. I was I was on the radio in Florida. Like, did you listen to my show? It's like, well, no. I mean, I you're did. whatever. I you. you streamed me all the time. Yeah. So for me, it's like it's just so like I you I wasn't in love with twenty year old you. Yeah. Uh, no twenty year old you. I may yeah. not have liked twenty year old you. I like you now. Oh, you would have loved twenty year old. I don't know. Yeah, no. I don't know. I feel like you were pretty cocky. No, I was. I was. You just sweet. Were you so sweet? I was so sweet. I'm sure, yeah. but I just I feel I don't know. So I can relate to that. Where I couldn't finish the lyrics of some of your songs. I know the titles of them. Yeah, because like, we've made jokes about them. Name, but name my. I have three top forty records that I wrote and co-produced. Uh, name them. Three. Three. Oof. Okay, so uh, I uh, suppose. Let, let me rephrase this. There are two of them that I wrote and co-produced. There's one of them that I just wrote. I didn't produce that one. But anyways, there's three top 40 records that I'm heavily involved in. Name them. Okay, so Eyes Closed So Tight. Eyes Closed So Tight by VI3 was our first, yes. Where are you? Where are you? J. Roman and Saluna or J. Roman and Natalie. That was a top 40 record as well, yes. Okay. And then, um... <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I know a bunch of your songs. Yeah. It, was it Slow Jam Mixtape? No, it was actually Jump Smokers, My Flow So Tight. It was the Chris Brown diss song. Uh, that went top 40 as well. I didn't know that went top 40. Yeah. Oh, dude. You want to hear about stories? Chris Brown calling the station about who, who who's doing that song. I mean, like it was, it was, it was pretty heavy. Whoopsie. Yeah, yeah. And then when I met you and I was playing like, like Chris Brown songs, you're like, oh, like oh, you shouldn't yeah. do that. Yeah. Like you have a rivalry with Chris Brown, I guess. I don't know about. No, but anyways, but it's, it's funny because you uh, being 28, uh, I feel like I do know your career, right? Because you you were, a ra- I, I, I didn't know you in Minneapolis. I didn't know you in Tampa, but you were doing radio. So you were Radio Kenzie. Like I knew kind of like, I kind of know that part of your career. Right. I feel like I've had so many different chapters that you don't know about, like mm-hmm. VI3, right? The J. Roman chapter, which was my my solo pop uh, era, right? Like Taylor Swift era, and then the Jump Smokers era. That was my... that one. I get a little bit. You you knew about Jump Smokers before you moved here. The, right? the Jump Smokers stuff, I get a little yeah. bit. And you've done things here and there, like features. Yeah. So I feel like I've been part of that. Yeah. I I know the Bulls version of you for sure. Yeah. I know the radio version of yeah. like, and you're kind of like an event hosty person, so I know that yeah. about you. Yeah. But you're right. The boy band and solo singing era. I don't. The pop music era of my yes, life. Yes, I don't. Yeah. I'm a woo. Uh, it's not my job. And it was funny because I was never a boy band person. She didn't even know, was, like, I don't oh, know who was, the in sync was. Was Justin Timberlake in Backstreet Boys? I'm like, no, I don't he remember. was an in sync. I don't, you could show me all the members of these boy bands. I wouldn't know who was in what. I yeah. never went through a boy band phase, which yeah. is weird. Well, because you are younger, so boy bands weren't as popular when you were coming up. I guess. I feel like, yeah. I feel like I remember people listening to New Kids on the Block when I was young. No, they were way before. Were they? They were way, my sister was into New Kids on the Block. They were like the first of like the pop boy they bands. They were the first ones? Yeah, well, I mean, I will say Jackson 5 was probably the first boy band, but like that's old school of like this new pop. See, Boy- I don't even know. I thought they came after. No, uh, New Kids on the Block were first. Actually, New Edition was first. Well, and then I know. I the, know New Edition. The same producer decided they would do a white version of New Edition, New Kids on the Block. Oh. They were gigantic. <laughs> I mean, they were huge, right? And then, I literally thought that came after Backstreet no, Boys. And then, this is what I mean. Then it was Backstreet Boys, and then it was in sync. And then the 98 Degrees, O-Towns, <laughs> VI3s of the world. VI3s. And then it really, I mean, that's really it. I, you know what? We should start like a new chapter of that. And like Marino, Tristan, you know, put Giovanni They're gonna put in put it in a boy band? Just start getting it, you know, get it oh, back. Get it back. There's money in this. I don't want them in a boy band. That is not. Okay. But what was funny is that, well, I was more, I feel like I was more into Latin artists. Like I had... I had Shakira posters. Mm. I had so I kind of missed that. Menudo, stuff. Menudo was another boy band. Oh, you know, Ricky Martin started yes, Menudo. Yes, that's yeah. true. I yeah. did like Menudo, but yeah. I didn't have like the posters. I didn't have crushes like that. Yeah. So in fact, I was so out of the loop. I thought Aaron Carter was the famous Carter. Yeah, I mean he was not anywhere near but as famous I, as Nick. I but I had yeah. never even heard of his brother, and I only knew who Aaron Carter was because he was on an episode yeah. of Lizzie McGuire. Yeah. And so I thought he was so famous because of that. And it's funny because like I'm still really good friends with the guys from O Town because I was part of that whole making the band thing right so we've hung out with them many many times yeah and i mean do you talk about we just swap stories and we're laughing and she's just like 
Yeah. I have no idea what you guys are talking about. And then also like Chris Kirkpatrick is there from Insane, and she just is like oblivious to I that. Got, entire, I have no idea who he is. I got nothing. The entire era. She's like, have. oh, Chris Kirkpatrick from Insane. I'm like, where? And <laughs> is that the one Justin Timberlake's in? Yes, actually, yeah. Okay, yeah. I, I got nothing. And yeah. but and Aaron Carter when I moved to Florida actually lived in my apartment building. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. So I was like, oh snap! Like yeah. I'm so. Famous. By the way, may he rest in peace. You know, he passed away. I know. Yeah. I know. I saw that. Yeah, very sad. I, Carter family's been through it, but they um, have been through it. And I will say, I, I toured with not only Backstreet Boys, but I, I toured with Nick Carter as a solo artist. And he is a great dude. Like, he's a real nice guy. Treated us like he's always treated me nothing but 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 great. And so it is weird that his family has had so many problems because from what I can tell, he's a great guy. Oh, you know? so, I know. I feel yeah. bad for that family. I really do. Yeah, same. But I meet you and I was... <laughs> Never like into boy band music, never mm-hmm. had that. And like, that was one of your claims of fame. Mm-hmm. And then, and then I was like, oh, I don't really like like barbecue food or anything. Like, oh, good. I'm an investor in a barbecue restaurant. Yeah. Old Crow Smokehouse. She hates barbecue food. I'm like, I'm so before. Everything he was throwing at me. I'm like, never heard of it. I don't listen to it. Yeah. I don't eat that. Food. Yeah. Well, I hate radio. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. You were like, it was just so funny though, because you're like, yeah. perfect. This yeah. is just going really good. But you know, it doesn't bother me because you you do love the the Cubs. Yes. And you love going to games with me. So like that yes. that for me is a deal breaker. Like you like doing that? Okay, cool. But you can, I can deal with the you don't want you don't want actually for a while at Old Crow Smokehouse, which is a barbecue restaurant. Um, we used to serve Chinese food, Chen's. So yeah. you would get Chinese food. I know. And then they took it away <laughs> took it and away. I was livid. I came in for Chinese food. I was devastated. Yeah, it's devastated. All good. Oh, well, it's all good. But anyway, so yeah, so now you know all of my layers and maybe you also can uh, relate a little bit to Raven Simone's wife about just being oblivious to Okay, but does it hurt? Career. Does it hurt your feelings? Like, do you feel like I should have all that memorized or do you not really care? No, I mean, because of our age difference, you weren't part of that era. You know, it, it, it's... It is crazy to, for, I, I said it before, I'll say it again. It is crazy. I feel like my career has had so many chapters and like five of them you weren't part of, you know? Mm-hmm. So that is weird for me a little bit. I mean, just to get even a little more sappy, like my father never met you. You know what I'm saying? Like I there's know. just certain things about my life. I'm, I'm older, right? So like there's certain things about my life that you just never were part of and and didn't grow up with, right? So, uh, but I will say on the positive tip, uh, we have a brand together. Mm-hmm. Radio we have in common like crazy, obviously. Our stories are very parallel with that. You're more of an old soul, so a lot of the music that we were into are, is the same. You know, I'm not into Cheetah Girls. You were, but like, you know, we both love Selena. We both love, you know, Tupac. We both love like Prince. some of the Prince. You know, um, so I feel we have enough in common, and we have enough chapters that are together. It doesn't bother me, but it is weird to think that there's so many chapters in my life that you just don't know. But anything that's about. what happens because you were single for like most of your life. So yeah. of course, you know what I mean. Yeah. It's not like you divorced a high school sweetheart two years ago and yeah. you know i mean you were you were really just single, I was single for a long time for like all of it so I and mean, i was totally happy and content being single and i thought i was never going to get married i thought you know what me and tristan will just my, my ride or die were good and then i met this girl and not only did i fall head over heels for her we got married we birthed another son and now we've birthed the podcast and i couldn't be happier oh you love me yeah i love you baby. No, come on now yeah. you know you can't spell romance without romance. Oh, God. Gotcha! Every time. <laughs>